Good evening and welcome to ATV News. My name is Shella Malawson. Coming up on today's bulletin, many people are struggling to get identity cards and other important documents from the Registrar General's office. The country's top university gets behind efforts to promote a new e-farming initiative. A disabled dancer from Bulawayo wows crowds with his street performances. And in sport, the National Darts squad are celebrating success at the championships in South Africa. Despite moves by the Registrar General's office to automate some of its operations, many people are still finding it difficult to get identity cards and other important personal documents. Our reporter Jeffrey Moyer went to investigate. Getting identity particulars at the Registrar General's office is now a nightmare for many people, especially those seeking to replace their lost documents. ATV visited some national registration offices in the city where it captured hordes of people queuing to get identity particulars ranging from passports, IDs to birth certificates. Charles Chimuti of Wesley had a terrible experience at the RG's office recently. Chimuti claimed that corruption at national registration offices was a combination of elements both within and outside the RG's offices. Meanwhile, Chimuti's friend is in a similar predicament which has rendered him hopeless. passport, the Registrar General's Office could not be drawn into commenting, but off the camera, Harare Provincial Police Spokesperson Inspector James Sabau said police are working flat out, rounding up towers, defrauding IDs applicants at national registration offices. Reporting for ATV, I'm Jeffrey Moyo in Harare, Zimbabwe. Researchers from the country's top university are spearheading efforts to promote e-farming among both large-scale and smallholder farmers. This new development aims to use IT to increase agricultural output. Jeffrey Moyo has the report. University of Zimbabwe researchers are promoting e-farming through a project that is linking agriculture with information technologies in a move that will help boost rural agriculture. UZ's Faculty of Agriculture showcased the new development at the recent research and intellectual expo held in the capital. E-farming researchers said there is little dissemination of research-based information on agriculture. Basically, e-farming is a concept that we have come up with upon realizing that uh, there is little dissemination of agricultural information that is research-based to our smallholder farmers. With the e-farming project that uh, is being uh, rolled out at the University of Zimbabwe, we expect farmers buy in on a small and large scale. Uh, basically, in the Faculty of Agriculture, we have expertise which ranges from uh, horticulturalists, uh, livestock specialists, soil scientists, agronomists, uh, all facets of agriculture. An agricultural engineer at UZ said e-farming will help disseminate information on key farm inputs required by farmers. I think there's a lot of rather there's shortage of information uh, by our farmers on equipment types to use, the costs involved, which obviously affect their production costs. Uh, and we believe that we can use e-farming 
uh, use the new communication platforms that are now available to facilitate uh, farmer access to that information. Through e-farming, farmers can share experiences and learn about fair prices. The project of e-farming is basically there to, uh, to, to improve information dissemination, uh, realizing that most of our farmers, they are located all over the country and they, they need information on market price, they need information on climate, they need information on, on, on diseases and, and we, we hope that through this kind of platform they'll also be able to exchange ideas, to learn new methods of farming and to communicate better. If farming experts also said the system is watertight and makes it difficult for hackers to temper with it. The idea here is to make sure that before it's rolled out to the farmers, it's tested extensively to ensure that it has no uh, loopholes like these hackers on the internet or on the, on the mobile uh, uh, cell phone providers. Reporting for ATV, I'm Jeffrey Moyo in Harare, Zimbabwe. A disabled Bulawayo-based dancer is wowing crowds with his dazzling street performances as he aims to raise money to record a new album. Melody Muguti gives us more. Disability is not inability for a Bulawayo man who is taking his dance skills to the streets to raise money to record his first album. Born without legs and hands, Joseph Moore is bringing entertainment to the streets, leaving scores of passerby enthralled. Joseph Moore started his dancing career about seven years ago and is now enjoying a growing following. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm talented. It's pure. It's easy because I'm a step in the way I'm going to go. 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 I'm going People who work with Joseph told ATV that their relationship with him is not in a way affected by his disability. He also encouraged those who are disabled to use their talents. I could as a one of our disabled people Disabled people still face numerous problems in the communities they live and Moyo in a way is helping to break barriers that prevent disabled people from enjoying their lives. Reporting for ATV in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. The National Darts squad are celebrating more success after clinching the Zone 6 championships in South Africa. Robert Tafumane reports. The conquering Zimbabwe darts team is back in the country after a tour of South Africa where they were crowned winners of the Zone 6 championships. The National Darts Association of Zimbabwe president said the victory of the team is a sign that darts game is on the rise in the country. It was a very good tournament. We played very well. I think we were really prepared. We came first overall with 190 points against South Africa's 156, of which I really believe is a very good achievement. Moyo also talked about the future of the game in the country and hoped that one day it will spread to remote areas in the country. All our tournaments we have been trying to use different provinces. At the moment, if you can check the last tournament, we're in Mad South. Mad South, they never held such a tournament like the, 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 the August tournament, which is held by the whole country. And we are trying by all means to make sure that the game is played even in rural areas. He said his association wants to change the negative perceptions about the sport. The game was actually not uh, being played 
at a higher level. That's the first thing. The other thing is the stigma which is attached to the game. Uh, people have always thought maybe that's uh, a game of drunkards and people of uh, maybe bad behavior. The Darts president is optimistic that the local team would soon be able to compete at international levels. See our level of competition compared to South Africa and other countries. Then when we decide to go on national on international level, we know that we are not going to shame the country by maybe becoming last. Uh, I think it's good when we want to go international. We exactly know that we go international, expose our players to high quality dance and also bring something out of it. The victorious team came home with seven gold, five silver and three bronze medals and they were crowned the overall winners after amassing 190 points in total. The host South Africa came second with a total of 156 points. Reporting for ATV in Harare, Zimbabwe. Thank you for joining us. Good night.